Hello and welcome back to the show. Uh, I'm Sean Smith and uh, sitting next to me here as usual is my co-host, Mr. Prescott Phillips. How's it going, everybody? How's it going? Been super busy in, at the compound here. What you got going on? Well, you missed it. Um, Johnny came over and picked up the transmission. I built him for his 72. He had a really nice core out of a 76, so it was his exact case. 388, 378 first, and put an 88 fourth in it, and he's pretty happy. But he, he gave me a really, really nice core, so it was super easy, and I gave him a deal on it. Well, that's going to be a nice setup when he gets that in his car. Yeah, so he came and picked that up, and when the, when the doorbell went off, I thought it was him. I opened a door, and it's Sean. Uh, what is Sean working on? Does he got anything special going on? Yeah, he's he wanted well he wanted to talk to me about kingpins in his sixty two because he bought that sixty two had dropped spindles but they just slammed them in everything was all bagged out already and it was just he would hit the brakes and turn the wheel and the thing would almost flop over and I'm like wow oh my and goodness so we were talking about that and then he was trying to sell his Gia oh he posted he, it on like Facebook or something yeah, like that I don't know where he posted but the, some guy saw the sixty two in the background in the pictures the guy was all over that sixty two Beetle. So he posted his Gia for sale, and he had a picture of a 62 in the background, and somebody contacted yeah, him about the 62. A, you know, it's a typical f- Facebook marketplace thing. You know, people want to buy everything in the background, <laughs> but never the stuff you're selling. So, you know, this guy was kind of interested in his Gia, and I said, well, how much for that 62? And, and I don't know if the guy offered him 22 grand or wow. Sean threw that number out to 22 grand. It doesn't even have an axle beam in it. And... Uh, <laughs> And I'm like, wow, you guys. He well, goes, don't downplay it right now. We might ruin the sale. I mean, talk it up. Yeah, this thing's great. Oh, yeah. it's beautiful def- gear. Def- and worth guy way more than twenty two grand. Yeah, the guy who's <laughs> listening, if you buy that for twenty two grand, you are getting a steal. He actually is. Oh. I mean, it's hard to find okay. a real rag top sixty two. Huh? That's it's from Alabama, I guess. So it's really rust free. Huh? So it's nice. it's not a bad deal. I mean, is it a deal deal? No. Nah. Twenty two thousand for a beetle. Oh yeah. My God. Yeah. For and it's pretty. It's got seventeen seventy six and some other stuff in it. But it's yeah. It's not. <laughs> but I, I know that's crazy. I can't. I can't believe the prices of everything. Yeah, prices are outrageous. So. Okay. What's our show about today? Well, I think we got a special guest on the show today. Really? Yeah, um, and it's, it's somebody I've known for quite a while. Well, who do we have here? We're going to talk to uh, Dan Ledbetter from VW Trends Magazine. So the editor-in-chief. Is he in- all that, too? <laughs> I, I'm all that and more. <laughs> hey, good morning and welcome to the show, Dan. How's good it going? Good morning. Sean Prescott, thank you for so, having me. It's going well. Yeah, so the first question I want to ask you is when you when did you change your name? To, from from DG to Dan. You know what? That's actually a funny uh, story. <laughs> was there an imposter that was using your name? <laughs> no. Uh, what happened was um, when I got into uh, working with VW Trends in the uh, in '84, uh, I you know my pen name obviously was Dan Ledbetter, mm-hmm. and so back in the day we really couldn't afford a lot of freelancers. Mm. So the editors would do multiple stories, right. and so yeah. we would we would have to come up with different uh, names, so it didn't look like oh the Bob. same guys doing the same stuff. <laughs> exactly, and so at that time, I'm sure you, you know the name R K Smith, right? R K, and it's like, well, you're trying to be R K Smith there. I, I was trying to be R K Smith. <laughs> uh, the funny part was he lived uh, about four blocks away from the original offices. Uh, at McMullen Publishing on La Palma, uh-huh. and uh, we had these. We had this big window, and our board was like right there on the wall. This was back before anything was digital, of course. Right. You're... So we we had the big magazine board laid out, and we finally installed a set of blinds on that window. We called them the RK blinds <laughs> because, because he could drive up and look at our wall and see what we were putting in the next issue. <laughs> so cheater. So I, so I thought, you know what, what? I, I'm, I'm going to be, I want to be as cool as our case map. So I decided to become DG Ledbetter. Well, that's fantastic because that's back. Now, people don't know this, but Dan did a feature on my car that was in, I think the, I don't know the month exactly. It was 1988, though. And he did it on my first, like, well-known show car, and it was called Agent Orange. Agent Orange. Okay, you talked about that in one of our episodes. I I think I see it right behind you. Yeah, yeah, if you look at uh, it, it's framed behind me on the wall, and it's notorious and and gave me a lot of... A lot of street credit. A lot of street credit, right. Nice. So, but we we filmed that. What was it? It was was in front of a a, a vacant restaurant or something. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, 
and that was that guy. It was in it was in Michigan. I think we yeah. were at the Milan show. After the Milan show, he said, "Well, let's let's do a photo shoot." I'm like, "Let's do it." And we just <laughs> you said, "Well, there was a, I think you said there was a, a vacant restaurant near the hotel I was staying at or something. It looked pretty cool." And I'm like, "Show me the way." And that's where we took off to. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was funny when we when we were on the road, we didn't have a lot of time to scout photo locations Mm -hmm. so like when we would land we'd throw all our stuff in the um hotel room and then do a quick drive around town and go oh that's kind of cool this is kind of cool and i think i saw that oh i can't even i can't even remember but i do remember shooting your car in front of a a vacant building it was like a boarded up restaurant (laughs) (laughs) like it was haunted or something (laughs) But it was pretty cool, and we and we so at every show we we hit it off and and talked and and you just kind of roamed around the shows aimlessly, and people did some people knew who who you were and some people didn't. It's not like you were wearing head to toe VW Trends garb or anything. So that right. kind of plays into our first question for you: Who are you? And yeah. like like, can you give us a little bit of background about yourself? Who am I? Wow, that's a very uh, that's a very <laughs> who, who is question. this guy at my core? At your who core. Yeah, I, I told you, um, Sean had all the good questions. He <laughs> does. I, I wasn't expecting this uh, big of an expose. My name is DG Ledbetter. Uh, the DG stands for Daniel George, or as I like to say, damn good. Damn good. Uh, I like that. Damn, damn good. Damn good. Yeah. Uh, go. And I've always been a creative writer. In high school, the irony of me being a magazine editor, uh, I think I got D's and F's in grammar and English, And but I would write these amazing stories. Like, I, I wrote a... I, I, <laughs> All right, a little bit embarrassed to admit this, but in high school, in my English class, I wrote a story called Farewell to Arms about this girl that had no arms. Ooh, wow. And so I, I just I just kind of kept up the writing thing, and uh, apparently it served me well because uh, uh, when I moved to Los Angeles – in uh, 1982, I was I was actually I'm actually a drummer as well. I play drums, and I, w- I was in a band, and we went and uh, toured Europe for about six months. Wow! Came back, wanted to move to Los Angeles, and got a got a job at Vans Tennis Shoes. Oh. I was the man- manager there. Good deal. And and one day the uh, the district manager came in and he told me he said, "Hey, we got to fire all the assistant manager." And I look at him. I was the manager at the time, and I go, "No, this kid is great. He's he's like he's going to get groomed to be a manager." And they said, "No, you got to do it." And I said, "Well, if if you're going to fire him, I'm going to quit." Yeah. I go, "I'm just going to quit because I don't want to be the uh, angel of death for this guy mm-hmm. trying to make a living." Right. And so I left there and got a job at Small Car Specialties in yeah. Anaheim. In Anaheim, yep, been there. Yeah. Anaheim. Uh, my direct boss was Sam Shackelford, yeah. who is now the you transmission know, Rancho, guy. Yeah. Rancho Transmissions. Well, Sam uh, was good friends with Bob Clark, who was the editorial director at BW Trends yeah. back then. And I was driving, well, this kind of ties into uh, uh, one of the questions you had, like, what was my first VW? Yeah, where did yeah. the Volkswagens come in on all this? <laughs> where did the Volkswagen? yeah, how, how in the hell did that start? <laughs> how did you get into Volkswagens? Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, I always liked Volkswagens. I always loved VWs as a kid. You know, my brother and I, it, and this is probably everyone's story, is, you know, you play slug bug when you're on family trips. Oh, yeah. And, and, that, and that kind of thing. And, I mean, I love Hot Wheels. And so I had the the Volkswagen bus with the surfboards on top, and yeah, yeah. you know the, the bug with the blower motor up front, and yeah. um, so that's kind of that started it. But it didn't really happen until I got my first VW, which in high school I was out riding with some friends in their Datsun truck, and we got in an accident, and uh, the truck flipped over, and I had some mild neck injuries, but. So the uh, insurance company gave me 400 bucks for my, you know, for my... uh, So what year uh, would this be? Oh, gosh. This would have been 76 or 77. Okay. Okay. Way before uh, I was born. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So you're you're a teen. Thanks for making me feel old. (laughs) Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I'm not as old as Dan would have been a teenager. I would have been in grade school. My dad was a teenager. (laughs) (laughs) So back when the earth was still cooling. (laughs) Yes. um, uh, I got 400 bucks and, and I needed to get a car. And uh, the, the church I went to was a Baptist church. And there was this old retired pastor who had a 64 bug that he had pulled the back seat out and put a board down yep. so he could throw his, throw, he could throw his golf clubs back there. Yeah, super common. 
So he uh, he wanted to get rid of it. I had four hundred bucks, and so I got my first. VW. Which, which was pretty a lot of money back then. For, back then, four hundred bucks. Yeah, four hundred bucks was, got you a pretty nice Volkswagen. Yeah, it was well. Uh, it, it most people it would have got a pretty nice Volkswagen. This one was, <laughs> this one was a real. This one was a real pile. I mean, what were they selling for brand new back in the 70s? Uh, that would have been, you know, $1,600, two yeah, grand. Maybe, maybe closer to two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. wouldn't it be nice if we could get those now? Yeah, oh my God. Exactly. Yeah, we were just talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. So, anyway, so I had this bug, and uh, it was the hood was held down with bungee cords, sure. and it was just a piece of crap. <laughs> It was horrible. I mean, and I tried to fix it up. I put in, uh, uh, we had an auto house in Ch- in Chico, California. Right. And we put in some of those fiberglass uh, dune buggy or sand rail seats. Yeah. Uh, and it was super comfortable. Uh, super comfortable if they stayed in place. <laughs> <laughs> My best friend would be sitting in the passenger side, and every time I accelerated, he'd go flying in the back. Yeah, flying <laughs> so in great. back. Yeah, nice. So, so, um, so you weren't working at small car then? No. No, that didn't happen until 82. Um, I then traded my 64 in for a 1970 bug, trying to upgrade, right? Sure. And uh, so I drive that uh, down to Los Angeles. I'm working at Vans, so of course I had to plaster the back deck lid with stickers. That's yeah, uh, Vans stickers, sure. Yeah. And uh, so when I was working at Small Car, I was joking around with Sam, and I said, I said hey, um, you think Bob Clark would want to come and do an article on my car? And he, he laughed. He goes, yeah, we'll call it the pile of the month. And, <laughs> which took and, off. <laughs> which took off, right? And so that was my that was my very first article I did. In fact, uh, somewhere, I've got to dig it out, but I have the uh, original proof of that story that's actually got uh, grease pencil marks to, like, fix things. Oh, and, yeah, right, right. And that. So that's kind of cool. I'm really, really excited to have that. But good God, let me tell you, when Bob Clark said, Oh, that sounds like a great idea. Have the kid write it up, and we'll see what he can do. Now, remember, D's and F's in English and grammar. <laughs> Never touched a typewriter before in my life. Yeah. So I'm doing the Columbus method, like the like one finger. Last, yep. The <laughs> one finger. It took me four days to write out like six paragraphs. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, I just wrote funny. Sh- funny stuff because i thought you know what what's, what's it's the called the, it's called the pile of the month yeah <laughs> it, it is it, it actually was sam gave it to bob and bob goes this is the funniest thing i ever read you want a job wow and, and i'm like uh, uh uh sure is this with the magazine or newspaper yeah, or yeah uh, was it was at the end vw trends okay so this That's is how you got, got into vw trends by writing this made up pile of the month article and the guy liked it so much, they're like, let's give yeah, you a what, job. What, what issue was that in? Oh, gosh. That would have been, it was 1984. So it was one of the I, first, at the, one of the first, the, like the re, yes. the, the first relaunch. <laughs> right. That right. is after, so cool. After it became uh, monthly. Right, right. It, so, it went so. from like a special to uh, a quarterly, then it stopped for a little while and then came back in 84. Yeah, I think April 84, it went monthly. Right. So it was one of those one of those first few issues. Uh, it's a little blurry. But, right, uh, right. I could dig it up because I got the complete. <laughs> oh, so you could totally. Find He's got it. multiple yeah. sets of the yeah, complete. Yeah, I got the complete. You know, every Volkswagen magazine that ever came out, I have all of them. Oh, nice. And then yeah. I have a whole basement full of extras, <laughs> and they're Here's worthless some... garbage to most people, but they're the, my most. No, it, they're they're my most prized possession. <laughs> it's it's a treasure, man. I get it. I yeah. totally get it. Yeah, so that's how I got the uh, the gig at VW Trends. It was honestly, it was uh, I, I like to call it one of those divine intersections. Yeah, well, because, dream job maybe. Yeah, I, I mean, it, at that time, I just wanted to make money, and so <laughs> I'm going. All right, I'm a warehouse guy driving a forklift and driving a you know a van to deliver carpet kits to car custom and yeah. those type of places, and Neat. like I. It just sounded like a good gig, and it sounded like right. something fun that people would actually pay me for. Right. Yeah, you get to go to Azusa car. and go to Car Custom and hang out. And, so you know. now, how yeah. were they doing this? Were they saying, okay, like, so what was your 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 next assignment? Were they saying, you know, go out and find me more piles of the month, or did they did they <laughs> like did they set you up with people to go interview? Like, how how did it progress from that point? Well, uh, 
when I got the gig, I mean, honestly, again, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> and uh, so they, I went in, assigned papers at the office, and then there I was sitting in this, uh, the very back room of McMullen Publishing, which, interesting side note, uh, you know, in the early, uh, if you look at the McMullen Publishing, their little uh, emblem, it's a, a yeah, cougar. It's a, yeah, it's a cougar. cougar hat. It's cougar a cougar, hat. yeah. Well, the cougars were actually real. Like Tom McMullen had two cougars really? in the backyard uh, in, in, well, in my office. <laughs> and I heard, I, I really should write a book about that place. Cause it's like freaking unbelievable. Uh, he had two live cougars and the back office was just torn to hell. It oh my like, God. Like the cat who does that piss and crap all over the place. And, and, uh, one of the, uh, the poor lady that did the accounting, Joan, uh, she told me a story. She said, well, I remember coming in and the way the building was laid out, you would walk through this side door and there'd be this super long hallway. And at the very end of that hallway was where the VW Trends office was. So <laughs> so she opened the door. This was before VW Trends actually came around. Mm. And here come these two cougars bounding <laughs> down the oh, hall. Oh, my goodness. And she turned right around, slammed the door, <laughs> and called Tom and goes, will you get your damn cats out of here? So, so That's that was insane. my office. That was wow. my office. Thankfully, I was not there uh, when the cats were around. So it'll be Oh, God, um, that is crazy. But, but yeah, uh, I mean, it wasn't really like they assigned me things to do. It was my, Well, then they just uh, send you on an airplane and say, hey, go check this show out in uh, Vila, well, Indiana. <laughs> kind of, I mean, my first, and this is even scarier, my editorial director, who he, the editor of the uh, uh, magazine, Robin Hartfield, who now works for uh, Cycle News, he was actually super helpful, really nice guy. We had some great times. And one of the things that he did was he actually had to sit down with me and show me how to use a camera. Like I had never touched like, a camera in my life. Like an SLR? Yeah. It was like I, I went out and I, I bought a camera and I'm like, what the hell do I do with this thing? You know, it's, it's not like those little uh, box cameras that you point and click. Right, right. It's a real camera would, would focus. It was a real camera. <laughs> and the very first thing they wanted me to do was fly to San Francisco and go see, uh, do you remember that twin engine uh, VW funny car called Red Rider? Right, 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 right. Right. Uh, that, I was supposed to go there and photograph some quote-unquote spy photos. Oh, right, right. So I'm like freaking out because I'm going, they're paying me money to send me on an airplane uh -huh. to go to this place, take photos, and come back and have something that's worth putting in the magazine. I was scared to death. <laughs> so Robin gave me some very basic, like, okay, you need to set the aperture here, you need to do this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. And uh, so I go there and I take the pictures, and thank God we were able to like pump enough light through them to make them usable because they were super dark and, oh and scary. My. Well, see, that's what yeah. Sean was. Sean was, how does a guy get a job like that? It sounds like a dream job. And I'm like, I don't think he asked for it. And, and he goes, no. oh, that's got to be the greatest job in the world. We were just talking about that. Yeah. And and, you know I, and I go, and then you go, I was scared to death. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, see, see. <laughs> I was I was so far uh, over my, you know, over my head sure. as far as wanting to, do this because again this was back when we had to type everything out on a typewriter i would turn it into robin robin would go through with his red pen give me all the errors yeah, yeah. and then i'd have to retype it like four or five times before i got plus all but the, see in all the pictures you took you hope to god they turned out because it's not like oh nowadays god, where you're yes. like well we can do this over just take it you know two seconds yeah, later but take that sounds picture. so cool to me though like to be able to just like but here, go to this event, party it up, take pictures, make sure you get your article and, and talk to these cool ass people doing cool ass things. I mean, that's, to me, that sounds like a dream job. It, it, it definitely was a dream job. And, uh, you know, I, I cannot say anything bad about my, uh, my time at, in, at the, in the publishing company. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, there were so many funny, interesting people. And I got to do uh, so many cool things. And... Uh, things that I would never have been able to do if I was like a warehouse guy at small car specialties. Yeah, or, but, or, or a manager at Vans. Right, exactly. Yeah, I might have gotten some cool shoes out of the deal. Yeah, but, you would have got uh, some free well, shoes. Well, thank goodness for that guy who made you fire everybody, who <laughs> yeah. made you quit your job because, right, yeah. Right, right, he pushed you along, sure. Yeah. 
Sure. Exactly. Fantastic. I, that's that's one of the, I, I, like I said, I really feel that's one of those divine intersections in life. Oh, yeah. Where <laughs> it's like, it's like I was at the absolute right place at the absolute right time. And it, it changed my life. I mean, I don't even know what I would be doing now. <laughs> An you know, owner of a van store, maybe? I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, or, or maybe just the owner of a pair of van shoes. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I love my, I'm, I actually still wear a pair of uh, checkerboard vans. So yeah, see, I, I have to buy, what's favorite. the new vans for the old guys with the arch support? <laughs> you uh, mean Skechers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the slip-on kind? No, no, vans actually I'm has, just kidding. I'm, van, I'm vans sorry. has a new model out and it has arch support because i can't wear them does it come with its own cane uh, yeah i think it's a walker it's a checkered it walker. comes with hearing <laughs> aids yes yep. and, and a, a set of teeth how many volkswagens would you say that you've owned just roughly um, yeah, roughly, yeah roughly, roughly. well I mean, it's not that many. It's just, it's just I'm old and I can't remember that. <laughs> um, no, I've owned, including the uh, the three that I have now. I've got, I've had uh, eight, eight, okay. eight total. So that's not horrible. That's no. not like no, it's not like order. That's not uh, Prescott that's numbers. No, that's yeah. that's yeah. more yeah. along my numbers. Uh, okay, yeah, because I own eight now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the ones that I have now, I've got our uh, our golf sport wagon. So okay, I right. That's the one you drove the, all over the uh, cross country uh, hell and back, right? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that because that was that was amazing. Yeah. So, do you own all like uh, newer uh, water cooled, or do you still have some old air air cool? No, I've owned, uh, I had a 98 New Beetle that I loved. That was fun. I, I would love to get another one of those. Uh, but I've got the Golf Sport Wagon. I've got a 56 Oval. Nice. Uh, You've that, had that a while. Uh, had that for about five years now. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've got a 69 uh, that's got some front end damage that I, I want to kind of take apart. Either I'm going to take it apart and just part it out. Because uh, it's got a good single port 1600 amp that I want to play around with, and maybe make it into a rat rod or something. Sure. Something just just some kind of fun. It may actually make a great story, like how to build a rat rod for under two grand or something. That'd be sure. kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, I think that'd be fun. So that's that's actually what I've got now. I mean, you know, the the thing about being out of the VW industry for a while and then coming back in is I want one of everything now. <laughs> I want I want you a and bus, me both. But, but I'm gonna have to sell a kidney if I'm gonna be able to buy a bus. Yeah, if you want a split window bus, good yeah. luck. Oh my god, I just saw one sell was it Barrett Jack yes. for hundred and fifty five. Well, that was cheap. <laughs> yeah, right. It, exactly. It's like, oh my god. Yeah, crazy. terrible. So let's talk a little bit about the relaunch. For the viewers that aren't familiar with VW Trends, give us a brief history of VW Trends magazine. Like how long have they been around? Um you know, just just stuff like that. If you yeah, for the what non, you know. for the non magazine kids, yes, for the non magazine guys who are listening, the guys um, like the guys like me, unfortunately. But, yeah, Sean but doesn't yeah. own any magazines, and I got a couple couple thousand right behind me. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, I noticed you have hot VWs behind you. What the hell's up with that? Yeah, well, uh, they're, the Schrader. They're, they're, where, yeah. where, where's the where's the VW trap? Oh, they're That's they're they're, they're, they're I, over there. I'd move the camera, but then I'd have to go and set uh, everything up. I <laughs> they're all, they're all, all about, there. It's all about product placement. Guys. Well, I know. I do apologize that we should have remodeled <laughs> right. before we brought yeah, you. Yeah, we should have moved all of my magazines. <laughs> all right, I'll get you an autographed picture of me to hang on the wall. That would be sure. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's and yeah and spell my name wrong and everything. That. Yeah, right, exactly. Exactly. Um, well, VW Trends started out in 1976. In fact, uh, if you are going to do a video, I'm holding up first. That's the one. Yeah, and tell, tell our viewers about the uh, what was in the middle of it. Uh, what is that? Is that the DKP? No, I know the, the, the middle of the magazines always had a catalog oh, from Auto oh, House. Oh, oh, yes. Sorry. I thought you meant in the middle of the cover. It was the Auto House catalog. Yeah, so fact. it was basically a, a magazine slash... Parts catalog. Yes. Which, and, which, why uh, didn't, why didn't that concept take off? <laughs> well, you know what? It, uh, actually, the funny thing is, I think that that's something that could be brought back. I sure. mean, even though everybody does everything online, I get it. But I think that there was definitely value in getting major company like Auto House behind you in the early days. Yeah. And so it kind of, it, it was perfect because. Not only would you get a magazine uh, that had all the cool stuff about, you know, the street scene, drag racing, Baja, sand rails, all that stuff, but you also had a catalog that was sort of like the Sears uh, wish book. 
Yeah, it was like a J.C. Whitney catalog slash magazine. It was so, I mean, that was my first exposure to Volkswagen parts and high yeah. performance stuff. So in 76, I'm 14 years old. I'm just getting yeah. into this car deal thing. You know, I'm, I'm done. I got my Hot Wheels and my model cars, and now I'm thinking about, oh, I'm going to get my license here pretty soon. Right, right. And, and he, he, my brother bought one of these, that that exact magazine. He brought it home, and I, I wore it out. It, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had I had every page dog-eared, and, and, and I looked at the thing every day, and then a new one came out, and I looked at that. <laughs> it was just ridiculous and how much yeah. influence it had on, on a young person just uh, getting into cars, you know. Absolutely. I, I thought this was such a great idea. And then when I... Well, I there, there's up, there's your next magazine idea. There, there it is. There I, it I is. I don't know who I'd put in there. Maybe, <laughs> maybe uh, someone will buy the catalog in the middle. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, when I was at Auto House in Chico, when I was buying stuff, I picked up a copy of Hot VWs. First time I'd ever mm. picked one up. And, of course, you know... This was like gold. It was like I scoured through that thing, and it really got me inspired to do stuff to my car. Ooh, and in sure. fact, the funny thing is, uh, if you go back, I think it was 1977 or 78, I actually wrote a letter that got published in Hot VWs. Oh, and, and the tech, um, ask the tech guy or whatever it was? No, it was in the um, it was in just the letters to the editor. Oh. Uh, and I was asking these questions like, where can I find the bubble window Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scoops for the back quarter windows. I, I just yeah. had a bunch of questions. But it's funny that I had a letter published in Hoppy W's ended up working. <laughs> so the cool thing was, back to the history of VW Trend, started out as... That's uh, you, Dan. You're keeping us on track. Yes. I'm, I'm Thank trying. You. Thank Trust you. Me. Thank it's you. Like, well, we'll, start, well, we'll start rambling about the stupidest things. <laughs> the, the, it's like a Seinfeld episode, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll be, it's all about we'll nothing. We'll talking about cabbage <laughs> in about five minutes. Sure. It was really interesting in the early days, especially when I got there and was able to look back at what they did and how they did it. And this was back before everything was color. It used to be uh, broken down where color was sort of the premium. Sure. Like yeah. you would get an insert of color, like you get four pages here, you get four pages here, whatever. Yeah, the rest, the rest black of, and white. Yeah, black and white and, and newspaper quality. Newspaper, yeah, right. exactly. Uh, I remember exactly. seeing those. That was very interesting to work around because it really was like putting together a jigsaw puzzle mm -hmm. because you'd have you'd have a certain amount of color but then you'd have advertisers who would buy a page of color so that would knock your pages down to two or three <laughs> right and then you had to kind of figure it out well is, do we need to do this feature in black and white do we do this one in color yeah so it was it was really interesting back then um how things were because we didn't have any computers until later in the 80s all right so you had vw trend it stopped publishing at a certain point and there was a relaunch what year what years were that about like so from, oh gosh well the relaunch was in 84 so 70 yeah, to 84 the monthly, that the was monthly, the monthly relaunch. relaunch okay uh, there was a quarterly yep Yep. Relaunch after the first issue, which they were just looking, sort of testing the waters. So after right. the first issue, it was a quarterly magazine. Actually, was it a was it a quarterly? I think it was really weird because they did. They just put numbers on them. They really didn't. <laughs> They're just like yeah, here. It was, oh, there's a new magazine. We'll just yeah, throw it. Ex exactly. They just <laughs> threw it on a newsstand. <laughs> kind of like our episodes. Like oh, we're just launching one today and yeah, next what week. Day is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 One out. So, so but, from 76-ish um, to 84, they were quarterly, kind of no no solid schedule. Just annual, yeah. It okay. Was like, it was a real uh, interesting uh, progression on it. So then in 80, well, when did they stop publishing or did they, so they, they went from quarterly to monthly and that's the relaunch was the quarterly to monthly. They didn't stop at any period? The f I'd have to go back and check, but it seemed like uh, they did a couple issues that were, I don't, I don't want to say bi-yearly, but it kind of was. I think it was. Uh, I think it was biannual for a year yeah, or two and then they went quarterly then it stopped and then they came back with and they, uh, yeah the they came back with a vengeance because so it was what year it, time frame would that be around that they came back with a vengeance that was 84 84 yeah okay 84. so from 84 what was the next step they, oh it went when did they, it went they it went it? monthly for years and years and years then yes oh, yeah yeah up until uh 2005 mm -hmm. 2005. It was dead. It was done. It. Well, okay. yeah, it it. it 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 morphed into a European car, and, well, and then that fizzled out. Here's what happened. Let me give you the lowdown. Okay. So, <laughs> 
So I left. Nobody's going to lose their job over this, are they? No, no. This, this is not going to be dead. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I might lose my job. <laughs> well, let's hope not. I, I'm going to fire myself if I, if I give away too much info. Okay. But what happened was the magazine was doing great. Like, we were at the top of the game. I mean, it was... It was well over, I think, 125,000 subscribers. And what happened was, it's and this is typical, um, you know, corporate crap, is it got sold, and then their bean counters got in and said, yeah. "Oh, this magazine's making great money, so let's cut the staff and cut the budget." Oh yeah, my goodness! Yeah, yeah. So it makes more money in their thinking. Yeah, when you yeah. Cut the staff, you cut the budget, and you're going to have a lesser quality product. Yeah. So. So the magazine started kept declining, and it got sold two or three more times. I think I think the last uh, company that owned it was uh, the Enthusiast Network, TEM. Yeah, right. It basically at that point had been whittled down to just a. It was sad. It really, it really. Well, it, was it, sad. It, I think it kind of got caught up in all the magazines taking a hit. Yes, um, it, it I did. Mean, all the magazines started like disappearing off the shelves. You know, the because there's a million of them. Well, multiple. Yeah. multiple and, magazines. Right. It's like once the internet started getting more popular, then magazines kind of fell out of favor. So the, <laughs> the corporate bean counters got involved and it basically whittled down the quality of the magazine. And then well, and when you when you whittle down the quality of the magazine and you cut staff and then you cut the freelance budget, you have maybe two people working their asses off trying to put out this magazine. <laughs> and and it it. You, you start losing subscribers. You start losing subscribers and quality. Quality, You start yep. losing well, advertisers. Well, nobody wants to read about a show that happened a year ago. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, and especially with, in this day and age of where, you know, something happens and five minutes later. Oh, it's instant gratification. And nobody, yeah. Yeah, nobody, nobody <laughs> cares about last year anymore. You can't just be a magazine anymore. You have to have an online presence. You got to have a yes. Facebook. You got to have Instagram. You got to have YouTube channel. You, and that's another way to generate income is to, to diversify in, in your media. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that was one of the um, one of the things that they couldn't quite get a grip on, at least for VW Trends back in the day. Right. They, I, didn't, yeah. they didn't see the they didn't see the value in creating a complimentary online presence that went with the magazine. So right. this was back in 2005? Oh, 2005, but by that time, by that time, it had whittled down to hardly anything. I would say that had they had, they had the forward thinking ability back then in about 2000, had they yeah. really jumped in, they, it probably would still be going today. Okay. I mean, but, Good for me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that, that kind of plays into my next question. So they basically went out of business or they just stopped selling and they still had the name? No, or, they, killed, they, they killed the title. Killed, how did you come across this opportunity? What what was what were the steps that yeah. like brought this to your doorstep? Well, here's what happened. Um, in 2020, during the pandemic, at that time, I was working as the director of marketing for a, a used Harley dealership in Anaheim. Okay. You know, I, I enjoyed it. I, I love marketing anyway, and I, I like creating You're, you're a marketing machine. I kind of am. And, and that's, <laughs> I mean, that, was, that was an undiscovered uh, country for me. Yeah, right. I mean, you don't know what, what you are when you're younger, but yeah, you, I'm, not, I'm not joking around. You are a marketing machine. No, and, and I love doing it because I've always, I've always been a fan of advertising and how things, you know, how you can take something and create something out of that. And make it, uh, you know, appealing to a wide audience. Yes, yeah, you, definitely. Yeah, you're just connecting what you have with people that want to have it. Well, and the good news was, and not to not to sound uh, vain or arrogant, but I had a, a good following of people that enjoyed my writing from back in the '80s. It's okay. Like I I had a writing style that was, I mean, in all honesty, it's it's exactly how I talk. Sure. And I think I think that was the boon for me was but, it made it conversational and felt like you were actually hearing a story from someone rather than regurgitated yeah, yeah it didn't right. sound like something that was right. scripted you're, you're, it sounded yeah. like you you were just talking like like me and you are talking right now you just you're telling exactly. the story yeah it's your personality that comes through the writing and that's not yeah. every not everybody can do that if i can if i can throw a joke or a, a comparison or throw a song lyric in there it's like i mean that's what i do in real life so. yeah sure you know, why wouldn't I, you know, <laughs> translate that over into, you know, the, the written word? Exactly. So, 
So here's what happened. So um, <laughs> oh, we're back. We're back. To, okay, we're, we're, back. Back. <laughs> we're back. I feel like I'm hurting cat. Feels like See, I'm hurting cat. I, I, I'm I keep trying to steer it back to the conversation, but I mean, it's okay. I mean, this is what this is our show. I mean, this, this is, is our what show. We love about the show. I guest, love that. Yeah. I love the, the, that. The guest it. has to keep us on track. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me open a can yes. of tuna. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, so back to the pandemic. All right, you're the pandemic. <laughs> you're working as a marketing guy for used Harley dealership, and go. And so I just turned 60 and I'm going, you know, holy crap, where did my life go? And I'm sitting there thinking, well, I'm getting tired of doing the nine to five and like, you know, the daily grind and having stuff happens that's out of my control and this type of stuff. And I said, what, what, what brought me the most joy? And I was sitting there thinking, and I go, well, the times I had the most fun was when I was working on the VW magazine and sure. like, I love that crowd and I love that audience. And I, I mean, I still love BWs, even though I was sort of removed from the industry, but I always kept a peripheral interest. Sure. In it. Well, that's how and everybody so, knows you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, um, I, I thought, well, well, I wonder what happened to VW trends. So I get on, you know, Google it and start digging and going, Oh crap. It got, it got shut down in 05. And I'm like, well, let me, let me go into the, the registry for copyrights and trademarks and see what's going on there. Sure. It was just laying there. Yeah. Really? Like it, it had actually, uh, L- expired yeah. in 90, in 92. Wow. And I'm going, no, this can't be, and it kind of freaked, <laughs> it freaked me out. It yeah. freaked me out a little bit. And I was like, no, no, this can't be right. So I like backed off for a month hmm. and then I thought, well, let me go back in and look, click, 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 click. And there it was, it's still laying there. I'm going, oh, wow. So I, I thought, you know what, 300 bucks, sure. let's, let's just throw caution to the wind. And I put it in there and started that uh, whole uh, trademark copyright so, process. So, so to back this up for people to understand, so basically you're yeah. saying the trademark on the VW Trends name had expired in 92 or it elapsed at some point? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it, okay. it, it had expired. It expired. So, so nobody owned the trademark to VW Trends. Uh, all the way back to 92. And you just happened to look this up in 2000 or 2020 at the time? 2020. Wow. Wow. Does that include all the like VW Trends Magazine, VWTrends.com, all all that? We'll get to that. (laughs) Okay. So Um, so I'm like, well, what do I do with this? Now I'm like really freaked out because, you know, it's one thing to think of something that would be cool (laughs) and it's a whole other thing to actually – be proactive and take steps to make it happen. Yep, right. And and so I go, well, I can't, I can't do this by myself. I go, I can't. There's no way. Right. And so I, I said, well, let me, let me stop for a second. I, I sat and I thought to myself, who would I want if I could select a, a quote unquote dream team? <laughs> dream team, yes. Of people that I would want, that I want to kind of catch my vision and share that excitement. And so I called up my best friend, uh, Rich Crafton. Uh, who was an editor at VW Trends mm-hmm. back right. in the day. And I go, I go, dude, I go, I've got this jacked up crazy idea. And he goes, what, what? I go, I, I want to start VW Trends again. He goes, I'm in. <laughs> no question. He didn't even have wow. it. And so I go, okay, there's one. Right. And uh, then I reached out to uh, Paul Morton, who I had worked with when I started Auto Sound and Security Magazine at yeah. McMullen Publishing back in the day, a car stereo book, which yeah. actually was birthed out of VW Trends because I started putting car stereo stuff in there. Right. So I, I call Paul and I go, I go, hey, dude, um, I've got this crazy idea. He goes, what, what, what? I go, how would you feel about uh, joining up with me and we bring back VW? I didn't even get to say trend. He goes, I'm in. <laughs> wow. He goes, I am in. I'm in 100%. I'm like, holy crap, this is like getting real. Like it's getting real now. So at that time, I reconnected with uh, Ron Petro, uh, the artist, and uh, I reached out. I called Ron. I go, hey, Ronnie, I go, um, I've got this idea. And I go, I know you're working at Hot PWs right now doing their their thing. And mm-hmm. I go, would you be interested in joining forces and like be the art director for this magazine I want to redo? He goes, what's the magazine? I go, VW Trends. He goes, I'm in. <laughs> wow. So now, now I've got my team. Yeah. And there's and your I'm dream like, team. I'm going, holy crap. Now I got to make this happen. You know, it's always fun to talk about something, but when it comes to putting the rubber to the road, uh, it's a whole different deal. So, well, it's got to make you feel good that you had some 
that backing at the drop of a hat too just like you know right and they didn't go dan i think you better rethink this you might want to check your meds or prescription or something it was very flattering and humble humbling that they would that they would jump on my vision so then i started going well now how are we going to make this happen because i don't have the capital to do it none of them had the capital to do it and and we said well what would be the best way to raise funds? Do we just do it online or do, you know, cause that's cheap. I mean, it, it wouldn't take much to do a, a an easing. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of put the word out and said that we were, you know, going to do a Volkswagen magazine. We didn't say the name yet. And overwhelmingly, everybody said, it's gotta be print. It's gotta it be, print. To be yeah. print. It's gotta be in print. And I'm like, okay, so Rich, Rich was, uh, is our business guy and co-publisher. He went out and started checking prices, like what it costs to print a magazine. And oh, yeah, and he probably got it, gun shy right off the Oh, bat. my God. It, it, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's not a cheap venture by any means. So we were sitting around talking, and I said, hey, you know what? I've seen people do amazing things through crowdfunding. <laughs> I said, so why don't we come up with a way – to get the VW community involved in bringing this back. So there's, so it feels like it's not only my vision that I'm trying to, you know, bring to fruition. I said, but people can be involved and feel a sense of ownership. Sure. So, sure. I got roped into that. So, so yeah. <laughs> and, and so I thought, well, there's gotta be like, I, I went and started doing my research on, uh, uh, GoFundMe and, uh, you know, all of the, all the all real the, sketchy, uh, uh-huh. all the stuff, uh-huh. you know, and I'm going, okay, well, what they, they offer different levels of sponsorship. And I go, what if we did this? What if we made our first issue and we offered a variant cover yep. that would make it more collectible or whatever? And so we came up with the idea of doing uh, founders packs. And it was I, I should have uh, dug mine out before this, but I, I have it right behind me. It's got oh, the you do? Yes. It, it's got the the t shirt and the and the the special magazine and I the, don't know the, and Shannon, it's, the Shannon cover. Yeah, and a certificate uh, of yes. uh, of authenticity. <laughs> yes. I think I printed that out on my computer. Uh, <laughs> well, but, uh, we, I have we all that because I, re- I I reached out to you and it's you're just like, well, what's the deal here? So, okay. so, yeah. So to recap, so, you you created this special package called the Founders Package, right. which were there different tier levels yeah. of so we had a we had the platinum level, which was a year subscription. You got the variant uh, Shannon cover. You got a T-shirt. You got stickers and a certificate of authenticity. I think it was uh, 199 bucks, something like that. I okay. don't remember what it was. So yeah. because it's a fundraiser, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. We had the silver level, which was. Uh, just the Shannon issue, a certificate, and some stickers. Then we had the gold level, which was just subscription and a T-shirt. And then I think we had one more level below that, but I don't quite remember. Or you could just like donate just, five or ten bucks. Yeah, right. So we started pumping it on the Samba, and uh, we started running an ad up at the top. And then, of course, hitting all of our social media, Instagram, Facebook, e- direct email. We really put it out there. And now this and, was all, so the founders package, all this money was for the startup capital to yes. relaunch the magazine. So, yep, okay. Absolutely. So we, uh, we ended up generating, I believe it was about 31,000, fairly low mm-hmm. and compared to other things. I mean, we had kind of set a goal of 120,000 to, to cover it, but mm-hmm. you know, we go, well, okay. Uh, based on, on the numbers we crunched, that'll cover us for three months. And that should let us know if this thing is going to go. Yeah, if it it flies or not, you'll give it a three month run here and see what happens. So we did the, um, the first issue and we're working on the first issue. For some reason, I had it in my head that Rob Petro could do magazine layout and we're turning, I'm turning in stories to him and all this. And, and Paul's going, uh, have you seen a flat come back so we can get an idea? And I said, no, let me reach out to Rob. And Rob's the nicest guy in the history of the world, by the way. He he kind of said, well, no, I haven't really done anything. And because he had told me he had helped with the West Coast metric catalog. Okay. Well, I didn't know that he'd never done magazine layout before. So we were like, when we finally figured out that that wasn't going to happen from Ron, we were freaked out because we've got this magazine we're supposed to ship in like a month. We don't have an art director. <laughs> and, and, and Rich goes, well, take take a look at this email I got from this guy in North Carolina. 
he he does uh, stuff for a college over there, and it's actually pretty good. And, and so uh, he sent me stuff. I look, I go, wow, this is pretty good. And we don't really have any other choices. At this time. <laughs> He's the guy by default. <laughs> so so we reached out to Jason Smith, nicest guy, fit into the our mindset, the culture, everything. Mm-hmm. Nicest guy. And right. they have very, very funny, uh, very dry sense of humor. And uh, we we got him uh, as a partner to yeah. come in and do it. And he saved the day. Uh-huh. And he's, he's, he's been with us ever since. So that's how it uh, how it all went down as far as how it started. And now we're coming up on our third year. Yeah, we've been very back cool. doing it, doing it quarterly. So, so how large is your company now? Like uh, how many employees do you have? Is it an actual brick and mortar place or is you everybody's working from home? There's four people on staff. Three of them have uh, full-time day jobs. I'm the only guy who decided to retire last year and work on this full-time. And yeah, it's it's well, actually where I don't see the point of having a brick-and-mortar building right now. It doesn't make sense. Gotcha. Uh, because we've been able to keep our magazine the same price for three years while everybody else is going up to almost... Nine ninety nine an issue. Yeah, you have no overhead. There's yeah. there's have, very little overhead. Right, right. Very little overhead. I mean, honestly, the biggest overhead we have is our print costs. Yeah, our, free, our freelance budget and the twenty bucks or so a month that we pay to the uh, remote PO box address. Sure, sure. So it's it's really great in that sense because, and that gives us a lot more flexibility. Whereas if we had a brick and mortar. I'd be freaking out. Like, how am I going to pay the rent? How am I doing this? I got to sell more ads. We have to do this. We have to do that. And it, it's running on a lean budget makes you very creative. This is the thing that uh, when I got back into the industry, the one thing that I neglected to pay attention to was the demographic. And I and then after we started, I mean, we, we kind of did a lot of things, uh, shoot first and aim later, <laughs> uh, where it's like we just kind of said, well, this would be cool. Let's do this. Oh, well, we should have thought about this because that could have augmented that. We noticed when we would go out to all these cars and coffees and shows and everything that the overwhelming majority were people in their mid to late 40s to their 70s. Yeah. And the, the scary thing about that is, I mean, as much as uh, I'm, I'm hoping for my uh, cryogenic chamber to keep me alive forever, <laughs> uh, uh, one day I'm not going to be here. And right. a lot of these people who are in this industry are not going to be here as well. Right. And the scary part about that is this next generation coming up. I, I just don't think the enthusiasm to get their hands dirty and to dig around in an engine department, pull out a motor and tear it apart and you know, clean things up and fix it, put in a new cam. It's like they want to buy a 2005 Honda Civic, throw some wheels and a lowering kit on it and a big stereo and call it good. Yep. Yeah, it's, and, I think you're right in some aspects, but I've seen it personally. It's it's coming it, – at one point, I would thought the same exact as you. Sure. That the younger generation yeah, is not yeah. wanting anything to do with it. But then I start meeting these people. I start going to their events. Yes. And yes. seeing what – you know, like the cars and coffee and this kind of things that – they don't go to the old man car shows anymore. They, no. They meet up at midnight or 8 in the morning or they do – and they do weird things. Weird to me and you, but – that's right. their deal, and I meet those people. And yes, it's a smaller crowd. I, I'm I'm not going to lie about that. But that but their enthusiasm is very their their imagination is just uh, blows me away. It's like well, yeah. you see it in the Volkswagen world. You see it with the Subaru swaps, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. With I would never think of doing that because. I'm, it just doesn't cross my mind, but these guys, it's not your wheelhouse. No, it's not. It's, and I'm not, but these guys, I mean, just to think about doing it, actually do it is like, I'm blown away. It's like, why? That's crazy talk. Or even with the water cooled stuff with ABA swaps and all that stuff. And they put a two liter out of a newer car into an old Mark one or Mark two. And it's the coolest thing ever. And they, and I'm like, how did you, this is so sweet and they think nothing of it and i yeah i I couldn't do it you know i could just couldn't do it (laughs) but i think i think that that is uh getting back to that yes i think this older generation is going to sadly die out and the magazine guys (laughs) right the magazine guys and that's really the thing that i'm i was focused on when we brought the magazine back was like how do we reach 
this younger audience that is going to need to be in place for this this hobby to survive yes you know because you can't go out and buy a a shell of a bus anymore for like 1500 oh, yeah. bucks oh, yeah. no it's like those days are gone yep. I mean, you're lucky to find a beat up beetle for under uh two grand yep right and oh. it's it's definitely not the way it was back when you know when we were in the hobby where you could go down the street and somebody in their yard's got a oh, running 69 yeah. beetle for yeah. a 300 dollars. Yep. yeah they were everywhere yeah it was like they were a dime a dozen there, there were more beetles than there were starbucks at that time yep, yep. but uh but the thing that uh, has always been a passion for me about this industry is how do we connect to the future generation mm-hmm. that's coming up? How do we get them excited? How do we get them involved? How do we get them to at least put a toe in the water and say, oh, this is kind of cool? And uh, the one thing that always has come to mind for me has been, uh, you know, how do we talk to these people? And instead of this being a boomer, thing or a, <laughs> uh, oh by the way just as a side note i don't think i mentioned this early uh when we brought the magazine back we had to create a publishing company uh we created an llc called sta publishing okay. and sta stands for second time around ah there you go nice so, uh, back to the back to the story what you kind of oh, yeah. you never elaborated on what's your idea that's bringing the younger generation into you never kind of finished your story with that word oh, oh. Yeah. you know it's a it's a, yeah it's no a, no no yeah. worries that's why i'm here for to keep dan, us on track dan, no you. dan was supposed to keep us on track <laughs> yeah well that, that went south pretty quick so yeah welcome to cigars and bourbon yeah this yeah, is well, this is bruce well, city bug well, talk well, after dark <laughs> So what what closed uh, that path for you? What what what's yeah. your idea that's helping uh, bring the younger generation into uh, VW trends? Here's this was my thought from the get go was we definitely want to have water cooled cars in the magazine because <laughs> to be honest with you, buying a new Beetle like a ninety eight to two thousand and nine. New Beetle, you can pick up. I I went on uh, Facebook Marketplace. Oh, they're Marketplace. dirt cheap. Dirt cheap, thirteen hundred bucks, yep. and there's still plenty of things you can do with them to make mm-hmm. them cool. Like you can drop them, put eighteen inch wheels on it, sure. pump up the motor, big sound system, you know, suspension, the whole works, and it's still relatively affordable. So that's been my goal is to try to come up with ways to get this younger crowd that maybe doesn't, they go, eh, it's an air-cooled car, I'm not going to make it to Las Vegas, I don't know. <laughs> it's like I want to I get them excited saying, oh, okay, I can get a new Beetle, which is water-cooled, and it's, it's going to run great. I know when I get in, turn the key, you know, hopefully, pray to God that it starts. <laughs> but, but, but it's like I think that is the, the angle, and getting, getting them to go – Hey, you know what? This is cool to get together with my friend and hang out and go to a cars and coffee or go to a show <clears throat> that is catering to the type of stuff I'm interested. Being being an old guy and trying to think like a 16 year old uh, <laughs> yeah, has been tell a me, challenge. Tell me how that works out. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't. But you know, I, I watch a lot of uh, you know uh, YouTube stuff and I, I try to stay uh, relevant with what's yep. happening and it's it's gotten more difficult because right. some stuff it's just i can't relate to but i know that it's popular so i have to sort of put aside my prejudices and go okay what about this is so attractive and how can i glean information from that that i can use we've been actually very fortunate that we have caught the attention of some pretty high name celebrities which has been great like uh, Gabriel Iglesias is a sure, good yep. friend of the magazine. Huge, yeah. In fact, uh, we're doing a story in our spring issue. He bought a, a beetle because mm-hmm. he's notoriously a he's, he's a, yeah. yeah, he's got 200 bucks. That's, that's uh, oh, what's his name? God. Fluffy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fluffy. Okay. And uh, we went and did a thing on his museum of all his Oh, cars, my God, and yeah. And let me tell you, nicest guy in sure. the history of the world. And Fluffy, yeah, Fluffy if you're listening Fluffy's... to this, we're going to try and get you on the show one oh, of these if days. We, so. If we had, we would blow up yeah. if we had Fluffy. Fluffy. I, 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 can, I can get you a contact. Oh, hey. really? Hey. I, I can, I, yeah, in fact, I've got to go see him. I think it's either going to be this week or next because I'm going to do in the next issue. It's going to be a surprise, but you get the exclusive. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We're, we're doing a feature on his bug, and the center spread will be a picture of him with the car, and it's going to be autographed. Oh, nice. Very so, cool. So you could, you could pull it out, hang it on the wall, okay. that kind of thing. Okay. So, well, tell um, Fluffy we said hi. Pass along some contact <laughs> info. We'd love to have will, him on the show. I will. Make I'll, sure I'll he doesn't him. doesn't listen to any of the previous episodes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so he doesn't have any exactly. uh, idea what he's getting into. 
But the cool thing about uh, like being who we are and what we do, when we did the thing with Fluffy, and it came about that he was uh, in the planning stages of doing his big uh, Dodger Stadium a show. show. Yeah. Well, number one, the only comedian to, to ever, ever ever fill huh? be it be at Dodger Stadium, and right. two, the only comedians that ever sold it out. Right. And so he wanted to do a cool little fan thing, and um, the guy who does his uh, handles his cards. He 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 reached out to us and said, "Hey, um, you know, Gabe wants you to be at his little uh, fan fest before." The big I'd, I'd be Stadium happy show. just to get him on the podcast. <laughs> oh right, yeah. I mean, he's and he's a nice guy too. He's sure, a really nice guy. But uh, he's this is something I'm kind of proud of because you know, Hoppy W's did a thing on his garage like sure. 2005 or something. Maybe I don't remember. Yeah, but sure. the Gabe invited us, mm. VW Trends, and it. Uh, the, we were told it was a it was a little bit of a discussion which magazine to bring. And right, it's got you can't have any overlap like in the old days. Right, exactly. Which, know, and we can talk about that too because that's I think is ridiculous. But, right. Well, what, um, what 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 was that? One? Oh, they just started talking about that that one. Oh ish. yeah, the pink the pink convertible. Cover. The pink convertible cover. Both of them same same car same. Same exact month. <laughs> Oops. It was just craziness, and was was I don't remember the guy's name that owned the car anymore. Yeah, um, but he he was he was tight lipped about it, and because uh, he knew what he was doing. <laughs> so, oh yeah. yeah, wow. That's that's a great way to get uh, blackballed. Yeah, uh, yeah. build another car. World. He'll build. A, he could build a hundred new cars, and nobody will touch Doesn't him. Matter. Yeah. That alone is, oh, well, let me finish the Fluffy story. So, okay. <laughs> Fluffy, Fluffy made the decision to have VW Trends at his big deal. He ordered 10,000 copies of the mag to give away to people. Wow. And so it was, it was really cool. I mean, it was, it was for a magazine that had only been out for six months, nine months to be, to be chosen by a big name celebrity like that was a, was a real honor it was a sure. real privilege wow so yeah so we got to be at fluffy fest he gave us tickets to the <laughs> very show. cool congratulations it was, That's it was awesome. amazing it was amazing. that is awesome um so getting back to some of the trials and tribulations of doing a magazine yes the uh infamous uh pink convertible car uh really I, I don't know the story what's the story can you give me a background about the pink convertible yeah, car? yeah what year was this sure. dan so, i forget oh, it was a ways gosh. back it 90s was, something right was it early nineties? I can't. I've got the issue in the uh, garage. Right. But um, yeah, and it was it's a neon a pink, that, a neon with pink a, with uh, a Carson top. Yeah, had a, had a, a brown kind of camel skin uh, Carson top. Beautiful car. One of these unspoken rules of uh, getting your car in a magazine is you don't double dip, especially if you're trying to get a cover. Yeah, <laughs> especially the cover. It could be. Like this, you know, there's over overlap always if you're at a show. Yep, yep. And of course, and of a course. guy won best of show at the show, of course. Well, you got to you got to give him a little bit of props. Back in the day, uh, we were all really tight with the Hoppy W's guys, Bruce Samerta, Dean Kirsten, sure. uh, you know, Rod K. Smith. We were we were all friends, and we would hang out at the shows. And but yet we had a friendly competition. Like yeah. if there was a car, we would we would battle it out, man, to get to get it. Yep. And what happened, if memory serves, that pink uh, convertible guy was, he was a super snake. Like, he worked it so well. Like, yeah, yeah. We, I, I don't know if Hoppy W's got it first or if we got it first, but he worked it so that... Yeah. Both we magazines. Both he did both it. Both magazines, magazines and, and cover. The same month. Wow. Same wow. month. <laughs> so you, so you didn't know what magazine you were buying. Exactly. And so we we sat down with the guys from Hoppy Does who go, uh, but it was like, this is bullshit. This <laughs> is like, this, we cannot have this happen. I, and I go, you know what? Had had we known, we would have told you. And, you know, we, right. we try not to share too much information because, you know, it's, yep. you know, it's, it's a magazine. Yeah. And sometimes you're at the point of no return. It's already in print and it's like, well. Right. But and hey, so, hey. It's no like, matter what, I mean, it's a cool story. I mean, it's a memorable story. I mean, it is. It oh, is not absolutely. cool, but I mean, it's it's a it story. Is, yeah, we're still talking yeah. about it twenty years uh, later. Today, yes. <laughs> and it, the funny thing was when uh, we brought the magazine back. You know, of course, we've always talked about that. It's like, and, and we go, we, we need to reach out, and try to be friends with Hoppy W. It was a brand new regime. Sure, they sure. Really, it's a they whole, really didn't, whole new group of people. They didn't want to have anything to do with us. Right. Like. We extended the olive branch many times, and they just didn't want to be friends. And that's okay. Come on. We're in the same industry trying to build the same audience. Let, why can't we work together? Yep. Not like share secrets, but like let's work together 
to bring this industry forward so we both have jobs. But yeah, it uh, it happened again. What? Well, I should say this. It almost happened again. We had we were working with a company. I won't I won't name names, but uh, they had uh, finished building a really cool Baja bug. Uh, class 10 and they said hey you know we're gonna have uh we're gonna have a guy out there and we'll shoot it because we couldn't make it because there were just conflicting events and so the the guy shot it and we were sitting there waiting because we were holding the cover for it rk smith gives me a call and he goes because mm-hmm. he knew I, we, he was mm-hmm. like he was like a consultant for us early mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. great guy love rk to me. yeah i love rk he called me up he said hey do you see the uh, new cover of hoppy w i go no What's on it? And, <laughs> and he sends he sends me a phone picture, and it was the guy had already given us the photos, and we were getting ready to run. Oh my god! And it was on the cover of Hoppy W's, and we were like, "Are you freaking kidding me?" Wow. And then, and uh, to make it worse, uh, the photographer was you know sent us a bill for the photos, which was fine. But <laughs> then we found out the company who shall remain nameless, uh, head of marketing who has now since changed, the guy's long gone, had told the guy, well, you, you'll get, the, you know, we're not going to pay you for him, but you can get the money from VW Train. <laughs> wow. And okay. So, <laughs> and so the guy, the guy reached out to us, the, the guy who shot it, and he said, hey, just to let you know, this is what I was told. And we were like, are you freaking kidding me? These are the exact same photos that they ran in that issue. Oh, it was a nightmare. Mm. And so bottom line, uh, the regime at the company that will remain. Yeah, I, I know the people you're talking yeah, to. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, it was they, a, it was it, it was changed. Stupid. They got a new guy in there, really good guy who I've known from the magazine industry for a long time. But mm-hmm. yeah, that was that was kind of the straw that that broke. The, the yeah, back. yeah, that's sad. See, the the thing I liked about Volkswagen Trends from way back was Hot VW is always focused on uh, California cars. Yes. If they couldn't drive there in the morning, shoot the car, and drive back home in the afternoon, they didn't want to see your car. That was their right. deal. But at Trends, you guys went everywhere. East Coast cars, Midwest cars, Florida cars, everything for all over the nation. These cars I've never even seen before Yes, were, were on the cover, uh, in the magazine. And that was super refreshing because i wasn't seeing the same style i mean how many catalog cars do i need to see or how many you know exactly and here you're you're seeing east coast cars and and midwest cars they're different they're just different they have a different way of their look is different right 100 percent. see i I, I like that you you said that that kind of plays into my next question here you know i was going to ask you how do you get the content for your magazine, like how do you get to the, all the all the different articles that you? I mean, you said you're you know four full time employees. Like how do you get these articles? Like how do you? Where Dan, do they Dan, come from? Dan Dan travels the nation in his uh, jet. <laughs> <laughs> no. You got your old um, diesel, your old diesel got, Volkswagen I've got out there. My, my diesel uh, sport wagon. How many <laughs> how many uh, miles did you put on it? That stint for when I I retired in March March fifth of last year. April, I jumped on the road and did uh, the Pacific Northwest tour. Yeah, came back, was home for a week, and then went back east and did everything for yeah. nine weeks. Let me tell you, uh, <laughs> that is that is not an old man's game. <laughs> Too many bathroom I, breaks. <laughs> oh, you know, well, actually, that wasn't even the worst. The worst was just like driving for so long. Oh and, yeah, and you know, as much as I would like to believe uh, I'm a uh, a fit uh, uh, individual, mm. now when you've driven for eleven hours solid and you try to get out of the car, you're gonna oh, you're, you're bent in half and it won't unbend. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. There's no chiropractor good enough to handle that. Right. But um, uh, the content, the content has was is actually been pretty easy. That's actually been um, well. That's where the freelance stuff comes in, hey. At, at first, we we decided we were going to do all the content ourselves, and and remember, everybody had a full time day job, mm-hmm. right? with, with the exception of me, as of last year. So we were working during the day, and we'd be doing VW Trends at night and on weekend. A lot of stuff, you know. That's one of the beautiful things about social media is you can go out and people will post pictures of their cars and stuff. And I just reach out and go, sure. Hey, has anyone featured this? Cause it's really cool. And then 
they'd say no, and I'd, I'd give them the guidelines of what I need. Sure, we need and this, they then just, the other thing. they just send them in. Yeah. Really? They and need a little blurb about what's in it and what it's about, what yeah, they're about, and, and, and you so you fill in the blanks. We made a text sheet, we sent it to them, they'd sure. fill it out and bring it back, and then we'd create a story. Mm-hmm. So most of the stuff we either find at shows, or people will just write in and say, you know, hey, here's I'm mine. building this, yeah. Nowadays, everybody has a phone with, a very, very, very good oh, camera. Absolutely. On it. So absolutely. it's like, well, you got an iPhone 14 and done. You know, take nice. pictures with that. You just turn yeah. it up all the way and and send us a million pictures. We'll we'll pick out the good ones. Now, are you are do, are you or somebody from the company still traveling to shows? Like, you do you have a list of shows that you're going to we, for the year? That typically we haven't set up our. Uh, itinerary for this year yet after december uh, right before christmas i had to take some time off because i'd just been working like a dog oh yeah i needed just to take a take a little bit of a break and do a reset so i could stay fresh okay Mm -hmm. um uh but yeah all of us all of us go to shows i mean um my my girlfriend is our uh, CFO, and she she goes out to the shows with me, and she'll work the booth while I'm covering the show. And then in the case of like the Let's Talk Dubs uh, show yep, that they Bill, do in Bill's, Vegas, Bill's deal, yeah, Bill, it's a, it's a great show. It's, I've, it's I've been on it. I've yeah. been on it a couple. Yeah, times. Prescott was on it not too long ago. He actually promoted this show, the Bruce City Bug Club. Oh, nice. Bruce City Bug Talk. Yeah, yeah. So so Becky, uh, we had two shows on that day. We had the Big Bear Takeover. Mm-hmm. that uh that myself and rich went to and becky and she brought one of her friends and went to vegas and she covered the the show right. for me. so yeah. it's been it's been really good because i really think that the thing that that separates us from a lot of other magazines is we don't rely entirely on freelancers i like to i like to get out and that was the whole purpose for the uh the where in the world is dan Ledbetter contest yeah was I wanted to get out there and I wanted to shake hands. I wanted to kiss babies. I wanted to <laughs> have the magazine be seen everywhere. And that was such a huge success for us. That was a huge uh, success in the sense of it, it It gave us a ton of visibility and it got us in front of people. And the one thing that I noticed when um, when I was out there, the majority of the comments that I got from people was, oh my God, I'm so glad you brought the magazine back. Mm-hmm. And that that to me was that'll was that'll, a, that'll make you sleep good at night. It does, and it was such a good verbal affirmation that okay, I am doing the right thing. I'm not uh, crazy, <laughs> and I, I'm I'm doing something that is bigger than myself <clears throat> sure. and means something. Right, right. But the bottom line is, you know what? It it makes a difference when you do something that is your passion and it's not work. Right, right. You know, it's mm-hmm. like. It's like I, I don't get up every day and go, oh, God, i got to write about a 48 IDA carb again. Oh, <laughs> it's like I'm excited. It's like I love all of the cool stuff. And there have been so many innovations from a performance standpoint. And oh, it's cool, ridiculous. Really, really cool things. Like uh, one of the stories, uh, doing an article on Supercharge for, sure. uh, sure. for air-cooled motors. Yeah, yeah. And I, I even played with those for all the AMR 500 stuff and yeah, all of that exactly. stuff. Yeah, exactly. You can put like a, uh, like, what is a 341 Supercharge? You know, the big 671. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On. Yeah, but they make they a smaller a, version, uh, yeah scaled down version that just looks Crazy. scary as hell. Yeah. Uh, uh. And so I'm kind of my goal is to build one of those for my for my fifty six. Uh. That would and be do something, pretty badass. Do something crazy with a Berg five speed and just oh, yeah. you know, I want to yeah. do something cool like that. But it, it's actually exciting to me to be able to go out there and find all the different stuff and not just rehash the same old stuff well, that's been well, going on for forty years. Well, even even new crowd getting into it and even the older guys, they don't understand that you can buy all this stuff right off the shelf and yes. and make a super fast, reliable Volkswagen. They don't because we go to the racetrack through like like, well, did you port the heads? And I'm like, no, I just bought them and bolted right. them on. And and then, and they're like, oh my god, your car runs twelves with stuff you just bought over the phone. And I'm like, yep. yeah, that's it, dude. It's not that hard. And they're yeah. like, and they're blown away at at the simplicity of it, you know. And it's yes. it's like, 
Getting back to one thing that I, I forgot to mention earlier, and I think it's super important, is as far as sort of the... I know I know that there is a mindset of it's VW trends versus hot VWs, mm-hmm. and it, it really isn't. Yeah. Uh, at least from, from our standpoint, it's no. not. Because I, I subscribe to yeah. hot VWs. Sure. I get their magazine every month because... I, it would be foolish of me not to. Right. Because, you got to know. <laughs> I want to know what they're doing. I mean, I get Volks uh, Mania. I get uh, Volks World. I, right. I try to get Hayburner, all those magazines, because I want to see what other people it's, are doing. It's research. Yeah. You research yeah. your research. topics. I mean, yeah. there would be, you'd be foolish not, if they're not looking at your magazine, if they're not subscribed to you, that they're not doing something right. Because right. you right. want to know what your competition is, not really competition, but you want to know what people are doing and yeah, what people are looking at. Right. Yeah. It's just an another outlet in the media they probably follow you they're on your facebook they're they're oh, seeing what you are doing you know of course they are yeah. and here's the thing that 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 i always tell people because they say well what's what's like the big difference because you guys have to cover the same stuff i go yes and no i go <laughs> we're in competition for features and events and you know who can who can get to something first i mean we're at a slight disadvantage because we're only published four times a year and they're every single month. But the beauty of what we what we get to do is we have a different flavor. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like Hot VWs to me has always been the elder statesman of yeah. the VW industry. And you know, hands down, and I I cannot discredit them uh, for being, you know, around consistently for fifty five years. Yeah, but it used to always kill me about the, what they put on the cover sometimes. It's just you know, and they got they got <laughs> I got a Chevy powered Volkswagen on the cover. I, like, I mean, you know what? what? I'm, <laughs> I am okay with the occasional oddity, you know, mm. because I, I'm, I'm an oddity myself. So yeah, but it works out pretty well. But the thing that sets us apart is with Hot VWs being the elder statesman, VW Trends has always been like the rowdy, out of control younger sure, brother. Yeah. Is that yeah. like you don't know what the hell is going to happen next. Right, and I right. love that. I love that about our magazine. It's like it's, it's sort of expecting unexpected. Yeah, right. And then that's what sets the two magazines apart, you know. Yes, absolutely. Plays into my next question. Uh, what do you, uh, what do you, what do we, what can we expect to see from uh, your magazine coming up here in the next year? Wow. Can you give us any little insights? Uh, I know you talked about Fluffy, but uh, yeah, like we what? Got, we got Fluffy. I got the blower story that I want to do because I think that's important. I want to keep enhancing the water cooled stuff. Like I said, I want to, you know, help that this uh, up and coming generation getting into the sport because. If they can get a water-cooled car, at some point they're going to go, you know, my dad had a 67 air-cooled Beetle. Yep. I think I want to build that. I see that often enough, too. And they, they, It helps bridge that gap. Yeah, it bridges the gap, and they start looking at the air-cooled stuff, and it's like, well, I got this right. Rabbit, and that was okay, and this Mark III and whatever. They're like, well, dad still has his air-cooled stuff. Well, maybe I'll buy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I, don't think that's, I don't think that's wrong in any uh, – any stretch of the imagination because you really have to, you know, you, you've got to set out some bait to get them hooked. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and what better way than keep them in the VW uh, ecosystem. Yes. True. And then, and then have them go, I'd like to build a 73 Carmen Ghia. That'd be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and just, so, and it's it, the trouble with the magazine scene. It's not like say a racetrack or something like, like all the circle tracks, in Wisconsin, little kids get in for free. Yeah. You know, for free until they're like pretty old, like 13. So, right. so they know they have to bait in the younger ones to keep the thing going. And then they won't see the fruits of, of their labors here as far as right. giving away seats. Maybe not in their generation, but they're, you know, if their kids take over the racetrack, well, they're already feeding them, you know. So that's. The, the magazine. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get it. I was gonna say, where are you going with that? The ma- <laughs> this analogy kind of got off the rails a little no, bit. No, no, no. <laughs> the magazine scene can't give away magazines and can't force these little kids to read okay. them. Yeah. They, there's well, no freebie, thing, you know. One one thing I have noticed, and one of the things that uh, that my girlfriend started doing when she was at shows, like kids would come up on their skateboard or on their scooter or whatever, mm-hmm. and and she'd give them stickers, and and I was like, well, wait a minute, we could sell those and make some money. She goes, no, 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 no. give them away, give them away, get the get the product yep. placement out there, mm-hmm. and and so I I bought into that, and it's been great because sure. we get kids coming up and they've got their razor scooters, yeah, they got the stickers all over stickers, it, yep. and if we can get it out there. 
at least that starts planting the seed early. Yes. Yep. To where, you know, they'll go, oh, I wonder what that VW Trends thing was. Let me look that up. And see, then, the, see, that's where our logo you know. mm-hmm. our logo is not going to work. Why? It's got a mug of beer on it. So? <laughs> we're, we're helping the, we're helping the, little the beer kid, Little kid's got a mug of beer right. sticker on his, on, his, on his Razor scooter. His mom's going to freak mm-hmm. out. Uh-huh. Yeah, What's well, this? His mom might want her own sticker. <laughs> mom, mom might want a beer. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's we're we're going to have to have a child-friendly <laughs> um, sticker. I think one of the things, too, that sets us apart is we're very much about the grassroots. Mm-hmm. We, we are one of the one of the columns that I started implementing uh, that I wanted to from the very beginning but couldn't get anybody to jump on board, but finally has now started, is I want to do a uh, club spotlight. Like mm-hmm. like you, you get your club together, you, uh, you know, take yeah. a picture of the cars yep. in a semicircle holding a banner. Sean is the newest member of our little club, the Beer Panthers. Oh, then, then okay. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, get me a shot yep. of everybody together well, with their cars yep. and a couple shots of you doing whatever and yep. send it in to me. We'll I'll do that. We'll do Definitely. that this summer. I will expect uh, some, <laughs> some good photos. So I could get a little bit I, of a write up. Yeah. We'll do something. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. We'll game plan it. We will. Get, that's the, yeah, this, that, that Sean's do. middle name is Game Plan. That's, that's my motto. <laughs> game Plan. Nice. All right. Uh, well, before we wrap this up, uh, just real quick, where is the best place? For people to find your magazine at, like where can where can we go? Well, right now the best place to get it is um, online. Okay. At, at www.vwtrendsmagazine.com. We haven't gone on the newsstand yet. No. Uh, because uh, if if you've ever been um, on the back end of running a magazine and trying to get the magazine out there, newsstand is like dealing with the mafia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so right now, news uh, newsstand is out of the picture, but we are we do have a very good growing uh, dealer network of like parts stores and shops and mechanics who are carrying the magazine. Sure. So you can get them at CIP one. Okay. You can mm-hmm. actually order them there, so that's a good thing too. But the best and most efficient way is to subscribe or go to our website. Okay. And pick it up. Very cool. I just want to make sure. I mean, you're a guest on our show. It'd be great to oh, put people yeah. on to you. And I would hope all of you, uh, not just you two, but uh, the yeah, uh, tens the, of uh, listeners, tens of hundreds the tens of, of listeners, listeners would uh, subscribe uh, to the magazine. And yeah, so it's been it's been. And the cool part is our subscription. We still get people who say, "I didn't know you were back." <laughs> Yeah. And it's been three years, my God! It's yeah. like, Where you have you crazy? been? <laughs> yes. Well, we're we're actually uh, we're doing a little bit more of a deep dive on getting into Barnes and Noble. Okay. Because we more so than grocery stores, that seems to be where a lot of people are saying, "Hey, I I went to Barnes and Noble, didn't see your magazine. Are you guys in Barnes and Noble?" Like that seems to be the big go-to. Yep. Right. Well, that's so, that's where my book is available. It's available mm-hmm. at every Barnes and Noble, and and people actually find it. All right. Well, uh, thank you oh, very much. Much ah. considering I told them we were only going to do an hour show, and um, we are well over that. But uh, hey, I mean, you know, that's the problem because I really like to talk. No, it's I cool, really it's do. great. When me and Sean started this podcast, I just said, I don't care what we do as long as we're entertaining, yep, yeah, or as long as you guys are having a good time, yeah, yeah. Well, we're gonna have a good time regardless if we're recording it or not. <laughs> well, and that's see, that's the thing I like about you guys, it's like you can tell that you guys are not only. Uh, doing a podcast and you're very good at it. you have a great you both have great voice by the way thank you and, I work out um, <laughs> <laughs> I gargle <laughs> daily yeah. I don't know how you Billy with your vocal cords or whatever <laughs> but uh, but uh, you guys you guys are very uh, conversational and it's like honestly it feels like we're sitting around a kitchen table having a beer and just that's exactly well, like, that's, like that. that's funny because our first episode was at the kitchen table. Well, yep. you were at the kitchen table <laughs> drinking a beer. <laughs> yeah, yep. very good. exactly. I think you've got a great format. Yeah, it works thank you. Out really, really well. Appreciate it. Okay, well, um, thank you very much for being on the show. People can find you at uh, vwtrendsmagazine.com. Uh, okay. Uh, www.vwtrendsmagazine.com. So check him out there. And then, as usual, you can find us. If uh, any of you guys have any questions or comments about today's show, please reach out to us at uh, BC bug talk at gmail.com or you can find us on facebook at uh brew city bug talk and uh if you have any more questions or anything like that let us know yeah let us know awesome. all right well thank you very much and have a good day okay peace out <laughs> take care peace, peace out